Good afternoon and welcome to our daily COVID-19 update for the town of Plymouth. This is update number 38 on May 5th, 2020. I'm Steve Trifletti, your Plymouth Town Moderator. We're here each day, Monday through Friday at noon for this update. This forum is brought to you live by PAC-TV on Comcast channels 13 and 15 and Verizon channels 43 and 47. You can also watch this on PAC-TV's streaming channel by going to pactv.org slash live. Today, for your questions, please email us at plymouthinfo at pactv.org. Today's participants joining Kenneth Tavares, Matt Muratori, and me include... Christopher Smalley, he is the Director of Marketing and Public Relations for Beth Israel Deaconess in Plymouth. Dr. Gary Maestas, he's the Superintendent for Plymouth Public Schools. John Buckley is the Plymouth County Register of Deeds. Kevin Hennessy is a payroll expert. Michelle Brady is the Director of Elder Affairs for the Town of Plymouth. And Stephen Cole, Executive Director of Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation. We're going to begin and welcome the Chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen, Kenneth Tavares. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. Just want to, uh, to notify the public that the Board of Selectmen will be meeting this evening at 5 o'clock. Thanks to the generosity of PAC-TV broadcasting the, the meeting. A couple of the docket items that will be of interest is the town clerk will come back in to discuss the special Senate election and the progress that he and his staff are making. Uh, we will uh, have a brief discussion uh, in regard to the potential financial impacts of fiscal year 20 and 21. Uh, we won't be taking any votes on that this evening, but we are going to uh, start talking about various uh, variables. Also, uh, if there's time, we will discuss the annual and special town meeting uh, articles that uh, need to be reviewed again. There are a number of transfers that uh, uh, can be considered uh, routine, but uh, we will be talking about those towards the end of the, the evening uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you, and that's Kenneth Tavares. He is uh, chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen. We're next going to go to Dr. Gary Maestas. Uh, Superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools. And Gary, yesterday we were reminded that this is Teacher Week. Uh, tell us how you're responding with the COVID-19. Hi, everybody. And uh, Steve, thank you for having me today and, and, uh, and all the guests today. It's, it's good to see you all. Well, this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and uh, there are a number of things happening at individual schools, videos being made, uh, a lot of parent involvement but it seems to be that there's a great deal of appreciation for, for teachers. I think uh, every parent that's out there has become a teacher and a, a support person for their children uh, over the last few weeks. And I think uh, there's a great deal of appreciation for that. So, you know, I, I participated in a video yesterday for one of our schools. Every single school seems to have some level of acknowledgement for Teacher Appreciation Week. I know there's a, a big uh, gathering later this week uh, that will be in the form of a parade that will be happening uh, throughout the, the community. But uh, to that point, uh, Steve, that there, there's just so many um, heartfelt messages to, to teachers and acknowledgement that they have been working tirelessly through this uh, time that our students have been away from our school buildings. Thank you, and that's Dr. Gary Maestas, Superintendent of Schools, Plymouth Public Schools. And he'll be staying with us to take your questions at PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. We have a date stamp each day to show that this is coming to you live uh, on May 5th, 2020. At this time, we're going to move back to Christopher Smalley. He's Director of Marketing and Communications for Beth Israel Deaconess Plymouth Campus. Welcome, Chris. Uh, thank you uh, for having me back again this week. And hello to all the other participants on uh, the call. Uh, sorry about the uh, connection feed there. got back on, thankfully. Um, like Gary was saying, there's lots of different weeks for healthcare as well. And this week is uh, National Nurses Week um, across the, the country and, and here locally. Um, we're very, very grateful to our extremely dedicated nurses um, at Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital in Plymouth for everything that they do, um, taking care of patients and, and often acting as uh, surrogates to family member uh, to the patients because their family members are not able to come into the hospital uh, given COVID restrictions at the hospital. 
Uh, and also a big thank you to all of the support staff who um, allow the nurses to continue to do their great work. Um, a couple of other updates for the hospital. Um, we have seen in the last few days an increase in patients uh, presenting to the hospital as inpatients with COVID-19 uh, being positive or uh, waiting to, uh, for their results. Um, so we'll see how that goes over the, the next week, but we are seeing that increase. And I think that's just related to more and more testing that's being done in the community. Um, our drive-through testing site is going uh, well uh, at, at the hospital, and that's for first responders in the area, um, employees, uh, and other healthcare professionals who might have been exposed to COVID-19. And a big thank you to our laboratory who's doing a phenomenal job with processing all those tests. Initially, we thought we would be able to do about 20 tests per day. Uh, last week, they hit a high of about 50, uh, I think last Friday. So um, a lot of thank you uh, to, to that. <clears throat> um, another really fun thing, and I don't know if it's fun is the word to use, but we call it a code happy. And this is something that's being used throughout our Beth Israel Lakey Health System. Whenever a COVID positive patient is discharged or comes off of a ventilator, uh, we play the Beatles, Here Comes the Sun. And that signifies to um, everybody in the hospital that there is a, a successful outcome uh, in what could have been something very different. Um, and one point that I'll probably make toward the end of this as well is our emergency department, is, as always, is open 24 seven. And we do have an awareness campaign out there now that, and I mentioned this last week, if somebody has an emergency situation, they think they may be having a heart attack, signs of a stroke, a bad fall or a bad cut, um, it's safe to come to the emergency department because anyone who has influenza-like symptoms is screened outside of the emergency department in a special tent um, right outside the, the ER. And if they have to come into the hospital, they would be brought to a uh, separate section away from non-influenza-like patients uh, so there's a lot of safety uh, in place uh, to prevent, hopefully prevent any type of COVID um, exposure. Uh, that's the, the short update. Uh, look forward to answering any questions that might come up during this uh, uh, hour and uh, a recap at the end. Christopher Smalley is the Director of Marketing and Communications, Beth Israel Deaconess in Plymouth. Each day we have a health component to our forum. At this time, we welcome back John Buckley. He is the Plymouth County Register of Deeds. Welcome, John. John, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you for joining us today again. John Buckley is at the Registry of Deeds in Plymouth on Aubrey Street. And uh, John? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be back. We're continuing our operations the same way we have. Um, all three of our offices are closed to the public. Although we were processing um, documents every day, we had a very strong month of April, despite the times. And um, we're continuing to um, take a lot of documents over the internet. We take about 85% of our recorded line, land documents um, over the internet and about 60% of our land court documents over the internet and our staff is kind of split, uh, A and a B team and uh, they, they swap weeks, but when they're home, they do some back book editing. So we're um, doing the best we can under the circumstances. And thank you. And that's uh, John Buckley, Plymouth County Registry of Deeds. And he'll be with us for our questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. At this time, we welcome uh, a new participant to our forum, Kevin Hennessy. He is a payroll expert. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, Stephen. Thanks for having me. So my name is Kevin. I'm the chief executive officer at Brabo Payroll over in Cordage Park. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the PPP round two. It seems that half of the funds are already spoken for. Um, I would anticipate that this runs out of funding extremely quickly. The first round, most of the large financial Financial institutions took a lot of time to build up streamlined processes around getting the money out. Round two, uh, we're seeing those channels effectively work. So if you have not gotten your application in, I recommend that you work with a local bank 
Uh, they seem to be the ones that are doing a better job of helping people to secure funding uh, for the PPP. Um, a lot of people have questions relating to the challenges of bringing back employees. So one thing that I did want to share <clears throat> was something that was added to the FAQ um, yesterday, and it's, will a borrower's PPP loan forgiveness amount pursuant to Section 1106 of the CARES Act um, and the SBA's implementing rules and guidance be reduced if a borrower laid off an employee and offered to rehire that same employee but they declined the offer. And I'll just give you a short uh, yes. Uh, they, they will, I'm sorry, they will not have their reduction reduced if they are offering the jobs back. They're going to have to document it. So that's an update within the last 24 hours. So it's really important that you keep up to date with these things. If anybody has questions locally, um, you can look us up at Brabo Payroll right on Google or PlymouthPayroll.com and we'd be happy to help you out. Um, but it is challenging to bring employees back to work when they're making an extra $600 a week on unemployment. And that's Kevin Hennessy. He's a payroll expert. Uh, Kevin and all our participants are available to answer questions today at Plymouth Info at PACTV.org. And now we're going to go to Michelle Brady, who joins us on Tuesdays. She is the Director of Elder Affairs for the Town of Plymouth. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Steve. Thanks always for having me, and thank you to everyone on the panel today. Just a few updates from the Center for Active Living. Um, masks seem to be the thing, and I'm really pleased to report that because I believe our seniors in this town are taking the mandate for face covering seriously. And I hope that all residents follow suit. Um, we had 294 masks donated last week, and they are spoken for. That just gives you a general sense of supply and demand that we're seeing at Cal. Um, we are actively seeking more donations for for, for masks, and the community has been amazing. Um, just want to acknowledge the Pine Hills Volunteer Face Mask Group, who is donating another 100 to 150 to us this week. Um, Lori Sullivan and the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department has been instrumental in really helping us facilitate our need. Um, I think it's only fair that every senior in this town who is requesting a face covering be, I will find them one because they are the higher risk group and it's the least we can do to alleviate some of their stress and they are following the social distancing guidelines and I want to ensure that they have what they need. So we're actively working on that. Um, the staff has been amazing too. So, um, and Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons made a great financial contribution to us so that we could procure um, another 100 masks for Matt from masks for Matt. So beautiful, beautiful community we have. I say it every week and I will continue to say it because it happens to be true. But I like that our seniors are reaching out and saying, I need to follow these guidelines. Also wanted to let you know in the good news category for Cal, um, two of our shine counselors are offering now to do um, teleconferences for SHINE appointments. So SHINE stands for Serving Health Insurance Needs for Everyone. And basically it is free health insurance information and counseling to Massachusetts residents with Medicare or those getting ready to be eligible for Medicare. So it's a, it's a really important service at Cal. It always has been. We've been lucky to have a roster of five usually but two of our SHINE counselors will take appointments by phone. If you want to call Cynthia at the center, 508-830-4230, she will set an appointment for you. Lots of questions we get on taxes. We do have um, a wonderful AARP program that does taxes for free for seniors. That, as you know, started mid midstream here with the um, pandemic. And they are still devising maybe some regulations. We don't have a date yet, um, but they are working on it. And I want our seniors to know that they have not forgot about um, doing their taxes. No promises, but they're working on it. And also just wanted to make sure that I, I always say the census. I know in light of everything that's going on, um, certainly our priority is right here in dealing with this pandemic and the virus as it should be. But our census is critical um, for our future. 
for our children's future and for senior financial needs. We depend on that. Um, the town depends on it. Our state depends on it. There's a lot of funding that will go to some great programming down the road. So please think about if you haven't done it already, um, you can go to 2020census.gov, 2020census.gov, and you can fill it out right online. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Michelle Braddy. She is the Director of Elder Services for the Town of Plymouth. We now welcome back Stephen Cole, Executive Director, Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Even more glad that it's finally a sunny day. Seems like every other time I appear, there was some gray overcast and I was getting worried folks were gonna think it was me. Uh, I've taken a habit of sharing a quote with the audience that I think helps put my thoughts in focus. And I've said before that Mark Twain always seems to have something prepared for any situation. Uh, a strange quote that I always liked uh, because of its imagery and relevance is that if a cat sits on a hot stove, that cat won't sit on a hot stove again. That cat won't sit on a cold stove either. That cat just won't like stoves. Uh, what that means to me in this instance is what we do matters. Uh, from where we all sit, our readiness for social recovery and by extension economic recovery will be determined by how we behave right now. Important components of our economy include people settling in our community, investing in our region. In our community, there are people who are looking to buy a home or sell a home or start a business, rent a vacant storefront or an apartment or attract qualified people from outside our region to a job in Plymouth. All of those things require investment and confidence. So I challenge folks at home, don't you want to give people confidence that they can sit here, that they can invest here? I don't want Plymouth to be thought of as a hot stove. We can't allow ourselves to burn the things that we care about because they will not come back to us. So that is why I would like to urge folks to follow the instructions from our governor and our healthcare leaders. What we do now, it matters for what we're going to be able to do in the aftermath. Um, now, at risk of exhausting an analogy, I'm also reminded at this time of Ed Markey's well-known quote, they can tell me where to sit, but nobody tells me where to stand. It's a well-stated position, but all I can say to any likely retort is stand where you like, but cover your nose and mouth because the economic consequences are going to be as severe as any social consequences. So with that, uh, I wanna thank you, Steve, for having me. Um, I apologize that I have to leave prior to the end of the broadcast because life is going on and new people are joining the world. I'm very proud to say that my baby brother is uh, welcoming a new addition to our family into the world. Thea Diane Cole should be here any moment now. And so um, if anyone has any questions between now and when I return on Thursday, I'll be very glad to answer them at that time. Thank you, and that's uh, Stephen Cole, Executive Director, Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation. Uh, thanks, Steve, and enjoy your time with your family. We're now gonna go to Matthew Muratori, Plymouth State Representative. Welcome, Matt. Hey, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon to all our panelists, and congratulations, Steve, to your, to your family. Good luck with that. Uh, we have a lot to uh, talk about today. I just got off an hour conference call with the governor to get some updates, uh, but before I get you the updates from the governor, first of all, he'll be speaking today at 1.30. Uh, so you'll be able to hear more about uh, some of this that I'm going to give you now. Um, first of all, let's start with the numbers. And, and some of this is, is, is somewhat interesting. Today uh, or yesterday, as of yesterday's date, these numbers, which was yesterday was May 4th. Uh, when you look at March 4th, uh, when we first really just started hearing about this, getting into this, there were two confirmed cases and no deaths. On April 1st, on April 4th, there were 11,736 cases and 216 deaths. And one month later, May 4th, there are 69,087 cases of confirmed COVID-19 uh, with 4,090 deaths. So if that doesn't tell you that there is still an issue going on here, uh, I don't know what does. But just in a short 30 days, look at what's happened from 216 deaths to 4,090 deaths. And again, uh, close to 60% of those deaths have all occurred in long-term care facilities, whether it's a skilled nursing facility, rest home or assisted living. Um, some good news um, on the horizon though, is that yesterday we saw our lowest total of an increase of uh, confirmed cases, uh, only a thousand uh, of the those tested 
uh, yesterday, which was 9,622 tests, and only 1,000 uh, actually were confirmed with the coronavirus, which is 10.44%, which is down from uh, 30% uh, at the, from the end of March. So we are seeing the numbers starting to come down. Uh, the number of those tested yesterday uh, increased to 3,000, uh, I'm sorry, 324,268. So the testing is go still going very strong. Uh, the number of deaths in the Commonwealth, as I said, uh, was 4,090. The, um, uh, the average age is uh, 82 years old. Uh, and that death count was increased by 86 from the day before. So we're now seeing the death count starting to go down a little bit as well. Uh, in Plymouth, uh, Plymouth has uh, confirmed cases of 256. Uh, with nine total deaths. All nine deaths have occurred in the long-term care facilities. And 98.4% uh, um, of those that have, all, that, that, have, that have passed away from this all had underlying health conditions. Um, interestingly enough, the highest one-day death toll uh, that we've had during this two-month crisis has been 189, and that was on April 23rd. Um, also, the highest total of one-day increases of the coronavirus was on April 23rd at 3,079. And the last time we saw a, uh, a less than 10% um, of the confirmed cases in one day of the coronavirus was back on March 24th, where it was 8%. Uh, so we are now seeing that curve starting to, starting to come down. Uh, Plymouth County has uh, confirmed cases of 5,602. Uh, with number of deaths of 333, that's increase of 10 from the day before, and the increase of, of those confirmed with the virus uh, has increased to, uh, to 95. Uh, with regards to hospitalizations, uh, Chris was, uh, was correct. Um, with regard to the, uh, the numbers of cases that BID is actually seeing, um, they actually have, um, have now uh, 66 cases with uh, two at the um, uh, two that are in the ICU, uh, which was um, a, a bit different from a week or so ago. Um, but uh, the, the cases are, are, are still going up at the hospital, uh, and they're doing, a, they're doing a fantastic job there. The overall hospitalization rate, though, has gone down. Uh, we, are now, we are now at uh, 5%. So those that have been infected with the coronavirus uh, that are hospitalized from this, uh, 3,539 which was down from 3,617 from yesterday and, um, and 3,803 from the day before. Uh, the highest uh, we had was a week ago at 3,892. So again, it looks like we're coming through this now on the, on the other end. It's starting to come down somewhat. Uh, so we're cautiously optimistic uh, that May 18th, uh, we will be seeing some, um, some guidelines coming out uh, from the administration with regards to how we can slowly, slowly open up like other states are actually, uh, actually doing. Uh, with regard to the number of beds, as, as Chris was talking about, uh, the hospitalization, uh, the number of beds that are available in hospitals uh, in the Southeast area where we are is 50% uh, and around the Commonwealth is 53%. The long-term care facilities have, um, Tested now 13,708 uh, combination of residents and staff uh, in these facilities. Again, long-term care facilities are assisted livings, rest homes, and nursing homes. And there's at least one case in 325 of these facilities. And there are 680 of, of these facilities. And again, 59% of the deaths, 2,428, have come from long-term care facilities. As of today, uh, there have been, um, I'm sorry, the, the 13,708 was those confirmed with coronavirus. As of today, 31,385 uh, folks in long-term care facilities have been tested, and that's 553 facilities. Now, with regard to um, uh, the governor's conference call and some things that, that uh, will be coming out today, uh, first of all, the advisory board has met with 23 different industries and remember, the advisory board is led by Lieutenant Governor uh, Polito and Secretary Keneally from Economic and Development and Housing. And they have met with 20, 23 different industries uh, to date. They've been meeting daily since last Tuesday. Uh, that includes over 100,000 businesses and 1.4 million workers. 
And some of the industries include retail, high tech, life science, restaurants, tourism and lodging, travel, banking, construction, and recreation. Uh, the next couple of days, they'll be meeting with labor, gaming, museums and culture, institutions, and sports organizations. Uh, all obviously expressing a willingness uh, not just to open, but how they can open safely under the new normal that we will be seeing. Uh, pet grooming and golf courses uh, seem to be the number one and two issues that people are looking to try to get open. Uh, so they are actually, um, you know, working with this industry to, to see how to actually do this, uh, those two industries. Um, with regard to uh, some industries that will, will open um, actually as of today, uh, florists, uh, just in time for Mother's Day, will, will open uh, as of today, not to the public to, to come into the stores, but they'll be allowed to uh, have employees in this store. Um, it depends on the square footage of the facility, but... Um, uh, they'll be able to have some employees in the store. They'll be able to take calls for orders. Uh, but again, they will be remain closed for, for, um, uh, for outside customers to come in. Um, however, what's interesting out of this is some of the things that they have to do, which really, if you're a business, this is some things you want to listen up to. Um, one of the things um, is they cannot have a worker come in with a fever of over 100, which means temperature checks will be taken on every shift. Uh, and I think this will be for any employer. So it's something to start looking at um, to start. If you have, you know, the thermometers you can take tests for it. Great. If you don't, you may want to invest in those now. Uh, there'll be a thorough cleaning schedule of your business. that will be done at the end of every day or in between each shift. Um, so those are going to be some of the, the standards. Obviously, masks, gloves uh, will be some of the standards. Uh, car dealerships will be able to be open today as well. Uh, closed to walk-in customers, but open for, uh, for transfers, deliveries, and returns of uh, and new and leases uh, and trade-ins. Uh, so that's that's by appointment. So your car dealerships will be able to uh, uh, do some more uh, some more work as of today. Uh, with regard to um, some of the um, the uh, state revenues, and this is interesting, probably more for uh, for Ken and those in municipalities. Um, we, it looks like we'll be able to get through this fiscal year, which ends July, uh, which ends June 30th, um, uh, by um, with uh, federal government um, and with other uh, resources that are that are still coming in. Taxes, um, remember, the taxes has been delayed till uh, till April 15th, uh, but if that money had been in um, coming in in April and May. Uh, we'd, we'd still be in pretty good shape, but it's being delayed. So we feel we'll be able to get through uh, this fiscal year through through um, through June 30th uh, without having to do any 9C cuts. Uh, and 9C cuts are those cuts that um, would have to come from programs that have already been promised money. So it looks like we'll be able to get through this fiscal year. However, next fiscal year will be the problem. Um, starting July 1st, um, there's, there's going to be a shortfall of about four and a half billion dollars. Um, so trying to develop the new budget, which we have not started yet. Uh, we hope to get started within the next two or three weeks uh, on the House side and the Senate will follow after that. So we're hoping to, to start building a budget soon for the state. So we'll have a, a better idea. Uh, but it, it, it is going to be lean. Uh, it's going to be trimmed way back um, than what we're used to. Um, um, but fortunately, we do have um, well over three billion dollars in the rainy day fund, so we may be, you know, looking most likely looking at the rainy day fund and using some of that money, but it's still not going to be enough, even if we use it all for the shortfall. So, um, so stay tuned for for next year's budget. But I thought the good news was this year's uh, budgets. Uh, this year's budget seems to be uh, okay at this point. Um, some of the other things that are being looked at, and I, and I mentioned this off here to Chris Smalley as the governor was talking, was Elective surgeries, um, a lot of hospitals now, as I indi keep indicating, have the bed capacity, but uh, elective surgeries are still not going to be on the table at this point. Uh, again, the concern being, I think, for obvious reasons, um, that folks that are in the hospital that have the COVID-19, you don't want to get it, you know, uh, the folks that are coming in for elective surgery to, to get it either. So um, I, I think there's some, some real um, um, desire for people to go back to do elective surgeries, but that's going to be held off uh, for right now, at least. 
Another big issue that keeps coming up for folks is uh, youth sports and summer camps and child daycare centers. And there's a lot of um, advocacy going on for these for these areas. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, the other side of this coin is that there's nobody under the age of 19 that have passed away from this, uh, and very few under the age of 19 actually get the COVID-19. Uh, so there's some there's some thinking that maybe summer camps and daycare centers and sports can can open up. Uh, but you know they can still pass it along to somebody else, particularly somebody elderly as well. So, the uh, the, the science of the um, the healthcare industry will actually look at this and try to make some discriminations uh, over the next course of the next few weeks. Um, so that is, um, I think that's what I have for now. I think I'll stop there, Steve, and uh, we'll answer any questions afterwards. Thank you, and that's Plymouth Representative Matthew Muratori. And uh, he's here, along with our other participants, to answer questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And as we review our questions, we're also looking at tomorrow's lineup. Uh, tomorrow's lineup includes Dr. Mark Wilson. He is the active professor emeritus, University of Michigan School of Public Health, Department of Epidemiology. He'll be joined by Lawrence Pizer, our town clerk, as you heard from Kenneth Tavares. Uh, he'll be talking about the special... Senate election update. Michael Jackman from Congressman Bill Keating's office joins us each Wednesday with Heather Cosby, who is a CPA, and Amy Naples is the Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. All of them will be with us tomorrow on Wednesday. At this time, we're going to go to questions. The first question is to Kevin Hennessy. Kevin, uh, when phase reopenings begin, if employers cannot offer the same hours as before, can a person stay on partial unemployment? And what would be the incentive to go back to a job where you couldn't have enough income? Kevin. Great couple of questions. So uh, I'll address the first one. I'll say that based on the Massachusetts unemployment guidelines, uh, an employee can make up to one third of their state benefit, uh, what they receive on um, Massachusetts unemployment as wages without a penalty to their benefit. So if somebody were to be, as an example, for their state benefit, getting $600 a week, they could work part-time and get $200 a week and not reduce their benefits by any amount. If they were to make in excess of that one-third, then their unemployment benefits on the state side would be lowered uh, by the amount that they made in excess, but they can work part-time. And when it comes to the incentive, uh, as far as what is the incentive for people to go back to work, the incentive that is if they refuse, they can lose their benefits. So on a federal level, uh, the extra $600 does come with a stipulation that you are available and ready to go back to work. And if your employer turns you in, uh, you'll be removed from the benefit altogether. So it's worth considering before you refuse to come back to work. Thank you. And Kevin Hennessy is a payroll expert. Next, we're going to go to Plymouth Representative Matthew Muratori. And uh, Representative Muratori, uh, the question is, it's been said thousands of people have been sending comments to the governor's reopening advisory board. Would it be possible to get updates of what suggestions have been received so that industries can see what is likely to happen? Uh, well, no, that would be kind of difficult because there's tens of thousands of inquiries that are coming into this advisory board um, so far. Uh, but the industries themselves, and I just mentioned some of the industries that have already been in front of the advisory board, uh, and there'll be other there'll be other industries coming as well. But if folks have have specific questions for the advisory board, um, feel free to to shoot me an email, and I'll be sure to get it right to the lieutenant governor um, and the secretary and the advisory board, uh, so that they can actually look into this. So uh, again, my my uh, email address is Matthew with one t dot muratory at mahouse.gov, and we'll be glad to kind of help them out. Thank you, and for those of viewers who are watching. Uh, we do this each day to provide you with contact and connection during the COVID-19 response in the town of Plymouth. We have local, state, county, federal officials here to connect with you, as well as experts in fields of health, business, education, and in other areas. At this time, we're going to go back through our panel uh, and ask each of our participants to give us uh, their closing thoughts and the takeaway they'd like us to remember uh, with today. Uh, we're going to begin with Christopher Smalley, who's the Director of Marketing Communications at Beth Israel Deaconess. Chris, what should we take away this week 
from your update? I think the takeaway, and, and Matt touched on this, is you know that we do have capacity at the hospital. And so what that means is, again, if somebody is having an emergency situation, uh, they should feel comfortable to call 911, uh, come to the hospital. Um, if they have influenza-like symptoms, they would be treated outside in the special tent or anyone that has those types of symptoms that could be COVID positive. If they have to come into the emergency department, uh, again, they would be uh, in a different area than those without COVID-like symptoms. Uh, there's lots of protections in place. We're constantly reviewing our policies and procedures, uh, moving things around to ensure a very, very safe environment uh, for our patients. And that would be the takeaway. So again, if you're having an emergency situation, don't delay, call 911 and come to the hospital. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gary Maestas, uh, is next, and he is the superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools. Uh, Dr. Maestas, uh, yesterday I actually called my daughter, uh, but I didn't wish her well because uh, I asked her to wish her fiancé well because she's a teacher. Uh, my daughter's not. She's an administrator. But this is Teacher's Week. What do you want us to remember? You know, Steve, this week is a special one for me. You know, I started my career 32 years ago as a teacher, and I... I wanted to be a teacher since I was probably five or six years old, and that was my dream. Uh, and I know a lot of our teachers, they started out from very their very beginnings in, in elementary school, middle school, high school, always just thinking about being a teacher. And I can think back that, you know, all the different situations that we had, we've had, you know, issues that have gone on in, in my career back to the Oklahoma City bombing, to 9-11, to all these different things that have happened, and they've shaped our lives in a very significant way and how we handle ourselves in our classrooms and, and how we deal with it, situations within our communities and so on. This uh, week, our teachers will always remember it. Uh, of all of the teacher appreciation weeks, uh, it's a special time. They have been working tirelessly. I'm not sure how many of you have kept tabs on what's happening with education in Massachusetts, but the virtual learning model is alive and well. Our, our students are, are, are doing um, the best that they possibly can, and our teachers are just, you know, behind the scenes, just, just really working diligently and compassionately to try to help our students to manage this time. So it's not only just the, uh, you know, the everyday classroom work, but it's just being there for students that need somebody to reach out to, uh, because this is a tough time emotionally and this whole social distancing piece is so important. Uh, and we just need to encourage everyone through this time to, you know, we'll get through it. And, you know, a lot of the celebrations uh, are with social distancing. And uh, I want our teachers message from me to them is just, you know, take a moment this week to just reflect on your career and reflect on what you mean to kids because you are important and you are vital to, to their future. So uh, with that said, uh, Steve, thank you for allowing me to comment today. Good words to remember from Dr. Gary Maestas, Superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools. And we're now gonna go back to John Buckley. Uh, John, uh, Dr. Maestas reminds us of other times that have shaped our lives and our business, such as 9-11. Uh, John, what should we remember now in connection with real estate and recordings in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds? Well, clearly we've gone through bumps in real estate over the years and nobody knows that better than you, Steve. Um, I'm, unfortunately, there are a lot of people that are still finding themselves not able to participate in real estate ownership and it's gotten more difficult uh, with the people that have temporarily or permanently lost their jobs. Um, but there is an opportunity for those that qualify. Our numbers uh, closing out for the month of April have shown an incredible amount of people have been taking advantage of low interest rates to either refinance and save money or minimize the years in their loan. Um, for the month of April, there were 82% more mortgages than last April for the calendar year so far, 69% more mortgages than last year during that time period. 
So if you qualify, uh, reach out to your lender and uh, take advantage of the very, very low interest rates. It would be a smart financial decision to prepare for the future. Thank you, John Buckley, Plymouth County Registry of Deeds and appreciation uh, from not only the public, but certainly from the conveyancing bar. Uh, last week we did reach out to you and uh, you responded within hours uh, with a technical question. So again, thank you for your support. And at this time, we're gonna go to Kevin Hennessy, payroll expert. And Kevin, during the time we've been responding to the COVID-19, there's been a lot of stress and angst from employees and employers. Uh, what can you say to them as we uh, leave today's uh, presentation? So I, I have a few thoughts that I wanted to touch on. Um, number one, make sure that you're studying all the different financial programs to make sure that you can stay afloat. There's a lot more available than just the PPP and the EIDL. To learn more about the governmental programs that exist to help your business, uh, if you go to YouTube and look up Brabo Payroll, you'll see a webinar that we did about the different programs. Uh, please closely follow and respect any regulations relating to reopening. Uh, we're business leaders here, and uh, there's a saying that I used to hear in the Marine Corps that I loved a lot, and it's slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So let's not rush this. Let's make sure that we're taking care to be community leaders and doing this in a way that we're not going to have to close our doors again to the public. Um, I'd like you to think about culture as you bring people back to work. So reflect on the fact that it is challenging for the people to accept that they might be making less. It is stressful for them to realize that there's more money available through unemployment than coming back to work. Um, but be cognizant of that as you bring people back. Uh, challenge is a, a crucial part of business. Make sure that you are being cognizant of the way that they think. Um, hiring is working right now. So Think about your hiring efforts as it relates to your PPP loan. Uh, if you do open up job ads on Indeed, you are going to see applicants that are ready to work now. And the last thing I'll say is if you have questions for us, look us up on Facebook. You can direct message us. I will do my best, customer or not, to answer any questions that you might have relating to the PPP, EIDL, or any other programs that might help you save your business. Kevin Hennessy is a payroll expert. We're next going to go to Michelle Brady, Director of Elder Affairs. Uh, Michelle, this week, what is important for our viewers to remember? Well, Steve, just listening to the panel, it just hits home that this virus has changed us personally. We all can relate to that, but it's changed us prof as professionals as well. If you look at the panel and you look at the diversity, look at our schools, look at our leaders, our municipal leaders, our governmental leaders, our hospitals, our small businesses, our elders, just on this panel today. I think it's very clear one thing is happening. We are all working harder, stronger, and smarter. Have faith in your leaders in this town and in this state. We are making sure every one of your needs are met. Um, just leave you with a little bit for the Center for Active Living. Certainly, you know, the caliber of our jobs, the nature of our jobs, what we thought we we did as professionals um, has changed immensely to Matt's point in two short months. I was able, able to gather some statistics for what we used to do at the Center for Active Living and I hope one day to do again. Um, but in the meantime, it's more important to take care of each other. And I was able to get a month's worth of statistics. And I do want people to know, you don't see us. You don't see many of us because of course we're all closed, but we are working very hard. And these are some of the things we're doing. In the month of April, the Center for Active Living made 615 individual birthday calls to seniors in this town. Over 1200 outreach well check calls were made to seniors in this town. 4,175 Meals on Wheels were delivered in this town and 450 social worker need calls, specific need calls were fielded in 30 days. I say that with pride for my staff, but I say it because I want you to know how hard your town and community are working for you. And I speak for the entire panel when I know how hard they are as well. So stay safe, be well, wham, wear a mask, and know that we are, we're going to get through this. 
Thank you, Michelle Brady, Director of Elder Affairs, Town of Plymouth, reminding us we're all working together to respond to the coronavirus. Matthew Miratori, Plymouth State Representative, what are your closing thoughts? Yeah, well said, Michelle. You're absolutely right. We're all in this together. Um, you know, we all have the same anxieties. We all have the same desires to get back to normal or new normal. Um, you know, but but we will. Uh, we will. We're starting to see some of the numbers change, and and I appreciate Kevin's uh, you know Kevin's comments as well because it's it's all about not rushing to do this. Um, you know, I, I talk at the end of every day about our economic health as well as our physical health, and you know we can't rush either one. Um, when you're in the hospital, you have, you have physical issues. Um, they're not going to rush you out the door if you have those issues. Same with the economic health. We, we can't rush this because if we rush this and we don't do it right, we're going to be back in the same boat again. And none of us want that. I mean, I, I talk from personal experience. I, I own daycare centers. I've talked about this on the show and I'm closed. Two, two or three of them are closed and it's, it's hurting. Uh, it's actually hurting me personally. Um, but I look at the physical health part of this and say, for the long run, I'd rather hurt now economically than hurt more in the long run physically um, for myself, my staff, or whoever, um, and, and, the, and the community at large. So, uh, so I think we're, we are doing this. We are doing this the right way. Um, uh, Gary, happy Teachers Week to you and to the staff. And and all the great things that, that they're doing. And I know you've got plans coming up for, you know, to help celebrate the seniors and we appreciate what you're doing with that. Uh, it's good to see uh, John Buckley talking about the mortgages and see a lot of people that are refinancing. It's great, great advice to give. If you can refinance, now's the time to, to be looking at to try to do that, save some money, lower your payments, et cetera. It's a great time to do it. So I'm so glad John came on to, to share that with us. And, and Chris, happy nurses week to all the nurses and, thank them from all of us in the community for what they're doing. You know, we, we always need to thank uh, uh, all those uh, essential workers who are taking care of our, our physical health. And, and again, those are taking care of our economic health. And again, stay informed, uh, go to mass.gov forward slash COVID-19, call 211, um, get text alerts by going to COVID MA, uh, texting COVID MA to 888-777. Um, or questions on your health, go to aboy.com forward slash mass. And again, just stay, stay home, stay calm. We'll get through this. We're getting there. Uh, another 12, 13 days, we'll be hearing about uh, what, uh, what, what the new norm is going to start looking like as we slowly start opening the economy. Uh, but keep doing what you're doing, whether even if you're just staying at home, you are saving lives. And remember, the more we come together by staying apart, the faster we'll go back to the people we love and the things we love to do. So thanks, Steve. And thanks again to uh, PAC TV, the entire staff for everything you're doing to uh, get the message out to the community. Thank you. Plymouth Representative Matthew Muratori and to all of our participants, Christopher Smalley, Senior Director of Marketing Communications at Beth Israel Deaconess, Dr. Gary Maestas, the Superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools, John Buckley, Register of Deeds at the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Kevin Hennessy, a Plymouth payroll expert, Michelle Brady, the Director of Elder Affairs for the Town of Plymouth, Stephen Cole, the Executive Director, Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation. And at this time, we're going to circle back to the Chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen, Ken Tavares. What are your closing thoughts? Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, first, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, thank you to all of the teachers that live in our community and work in the community. Plymouth has a, a reputation for putting our children first. And we can provide the buildings, we can provide the computers, we can provide the books, but we need the teacher. We need the individual that's going to make a difference. And I know from living in a family of uh, teachers, how much is done outside of the classroom. It's been uh, heartwarming to watch how teachers are responding to their children uh, in rooms that they don't sit in with them. Uh, it is an outstanding job that they've done. And thank you so much on behalf of this community for your chosen profession. Also, I, I would be remiss if I didn't just remind the community that we do have to take our time. Matt is absolutely right. We've got to be uh, very, very calculated in how we return 
uh, to the workplace. There is so much that we are going to do that we've never done before in our lives. We're going to be making changes uh, as we uh, return to the workforce. So I uh, was somewhat taken back yesterday listening to someone on uh, Boston uh, News talking about uh, uh, this is just a virus. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's no worse than the flu. I don't know where they've been for the last few months, but that's an attitude that needs to change. We can do it. We will defeat this virus, but we must do it you know, through uh, being organized in our efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth Tavares. Chair Plymouth Board of Selectmen, as we look to tomorrow Wednesday, a reminder to all our viewers that the requirement to wear masks in Plymouth is expanded to the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts beginning tomorrow. We'll welcome our lineup that will include Dr. Mark Wilson. He is the uh, professor with the Department of Epidemiology. Lawrence Pizer, the Plymouth Town Clerk. Michael Jackman, staff, Congressman Bill Keating's office, Heather Cosby, Plymouth CPA, Amy Naples, Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. They'll be joining Kenneth Tavares, Matt Muratori, and me. I'm Steve Trofletti, Plymouth Town Moderator. Thank you for joining us, and good day.